morning guys it's about 10 to 7 now and uh, we're both awake ish Andy says he's been up uh, filming a little bit and uh, I've been up eating um, I've just had a lovely wayfair of beans and sausages was gonna have it for lunch today but I thought no it's bloody cold and I want it now I would give that I'd probably give that about a 7 out of 10. It was actually quite sweet tasting, which was a bit weird. Um, the beans weren't orange, they were more like red. So, But it was good, it was good. And I've got a coffee and a hot chocolate down there and I've had quite a few cereal bars. Uh, the tents, we've both got the same tents. Uh, I'll just get them both in. Yeah, held up really well. Um, did we have any rain last night? I don't think so. No, I don't think we did. A um, little bit of a breeze at one point, at about half one in the morning, but that was it really. I, I slept pretty well, so I don't really remember too much. But uh, I think there's something going on over at the aggregates place at Cliff Fault behind me. So Cliff Fault's just over my shoulder. And yes, yeah, so they're starting early. I don't think we're going to get a sunrise. It's a bit too misty and murky. So, yeah, we're. Uh, I think the plan is we're going to lounge around here for a little bit longer because we are on a fairly isolated spot, aren't we? Sort of this. Uh, so we've got this this lake behind us, and it's sort of a, you know a little way off of the footpath. So we're you know behind a load of. Uh, bushes and stuff here as well so yeah we're all right here so yeah we'll um probably next time you see us is when uh when we've broken camp chat to you in a bit Kicking a world or something? no i don't know what that is that's andy's meant to be doing titanic or something <laughs> you make a really shit cake winslet honestly like i, I wouldn't draw you, you didn't say that last night yeah that's... <laughs> he said he loved me yeah anyway at least I asked you out. Anyway, right. Um, I was filming that, by the way. Um, <laughs> right, okay. Joking aside, we're all packed up. And as you can see, we have left no trace. Please try and do the same. It's a really good little spot, this. Uh, that's got to be a contender for sort of best wild camp spots I think I've found anyway. And, uh, yeah. Got all our rubbish and stuff. And we're heading off. That one, what's he looking at? What is that? It's another floater. Yeah, there's some more horse manure that we've knocked in the water and it's floating, so. Uh... <laughs> Tom pooping outdoors. Yeah, <laughs> shit gate, right. Okay, moving on. We're gonna carry on along the Saxon Shore Way. Uh, then we're going to, Sh is it Shawmead? Shawmead, Shawmead Fault. And yeah, we'll have a little look at that, have a little look at the Thames, and then I believe we're heading back to the cars. And we're going to go and have a look at the explosive factory, which is sort of back that way, but we're going to drive there first. So, right, we will see you soon. So, here's the, the Thames estuary. So, the tide's out a bit more now, so you can see sort of loads of remains of bits and pieces. We reckon they're like old jetties and stuff. Yeah, the shipwreck is over there, back towards the fault, which is just about there. You can barely see Essex, it's great. <laughs> it is great, yeah. <laughs> like, for a second there, I almost forgot that Essex, yeah, is only over the water there. So, uh, yeah, there's no point in me waving. They're not going to see me from here. <laughs> yes, coal house thought will be on the other side. Oh, what was that? I thought that was a dead rat for a second then. <laughs> it's just a paint roller. I've just realised you just dissed Essex. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs>
I found a hard hat on the foreshore. I think it was just washed up, so I'm keeping this. I don't know why, I just am. Uh, there's an anagram in there somewhere, a hard hat on a foreshore. <laughs> yeah, there's. Uh, you mean a euphemism? A euphemism, a hard hat on a foreshore. There's a nice ferry there, and, oh, zoom out, zoom out, and as I've got my hard hat, there's another red one down there, and he's got to have that. Builders on tour. <laughs> like crabs in it. <laughs> That's what she said. Go on, stick it on. I've got a hat on like you. That's alright. Don't think about the smell, just stick it on your head. <laughs> Was it once occupied by someone with a small head? Yeah. Could be Oriental. They've got small heads. There you go. <laughs> that is, suits you. <laughs> and there we go, we've completed the set. <laughs> Builders on tour. <laughs> I'll have 12 sugars, not 10. <laughs> I did hear someone say that once on site, anyway. <laughs> right. Anyways, yeah. More uh, sophisticated shenanigans on Tom Outdoors, as always. <laughs> Dripping on the head. <laughs> Lovely. That's what she said. You're not going to keep it? No. I'm keeping mine, definitely. Right. <laughs> this horse is uh, scratching his leg with his foot. He looks like he's enjoying it as well. <laughs> What's the point? Why are you filming this? <laughs> yeah, more wild horses. It's lovely. All along I've been walking with Dr. Doolittle. They just walk straight over to him. <laughs> the horse whisperer. That's pretty cool. They gave me the evils and just walked straight over to him. It's <laughs> pretty cool. Oh nice, fresh, fresh pile. It's, hang on, it's sniffing its own shit. Everyone likes their own this brand. Huh? This one's a bit big. Oh, I don't know, it's about the same sort of size as them ones, but... He's giving you evils. Yeah, I think that's daddy. <laughs> yeah. Checking me out. Just before we get to Sean Mead Fault, we've come across a little... World War II pillbox on the foreshore. This one's sort of partially submerged. I wonder if anyone knows what one of these are. Is this one of those like machine gun emplacements or sort of a you know a cannon, a gun emplacement basically? So I think it could be one of those. Let us know. Andy, where are we going? I've no idea. I 
I think we just woke these two up. It's pretty cool though how like they just sort of stand over them and like protect them while they're asleep. It's really nice. Okay, we've arrived at Shawmead Fault. So we're gonna have a little look around that for a bit. Get back to you then. So yeah, Shawmead Fort was used up until the 1950s and the sort of like the outer wall, some of the machine gun emplacements, the barracks and admin buildings. Um, I think some of it's left, I can't remember what Andy said now. Um, yeah, let's have a little look through here. Oh. Jump down here. And yeah. It's a bit closer to the civilization, so it's been graffitied a lot more. Rest in peace, Adam. It's fortunate we made it this far. Adam Chambers. Fortune. Oh, <laughs> go away. <sighs> yeah, loads of cheap jokes on this. Uh, on this one, I'm afraid. <laughs> These rails along the floor here, Andy's just pointed out, would have uh, housed the guns on like a train wheel and they would have just moved along each of these little windows where the guns would poke through to fire. So, yeah, once again, this would have guarded like the Thames Estuary along with, you know, like Cliff Fort and then of course the other side, Tilbury and Coalhouse Fort. So, yeah, there's a lot of forts along along the Thames sort of around this bit it must have been as I say like a an area that really needed protecting but apparently like nothing ever came of it really it was never sort of never really had any sort of uh, trouble or sort of conflict along here but it was always that threat I mean it's been a constant threat for centuries really from you know Napoleon to Hitler <laughs> oh shit. This could be the last of you see the Tom outdoors. <laughs> oh. I can uh, reach his phone so I could upload his last video for him. Like or something. <laughs> so we could all say goodbye. <laughs> Farewell. Oh. Do you want me to pass your hard hat? Hang on, no, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. There's loads of women in here. <laughs> you want to get down here? <laughs> right, just crawled through this little gap here, and you might just be able to make it out in the darkness. We're sort of underneath Shawmead Fault, and there's these tunnels that Andy says apparently lead to like the gun magazines. So I had torches running low on battery as well, so. Let's see what it's like under here. It's uh, quite a bit of rubbish dumped in here. Ah. Whoa, shit. Getting more into this exploring stuff. Uh, well, it goes quite a way. Wow. And it's not flooded either. And he's just waiting outside with the stuff. It's always good if there's at least one other person outside in case. Yeah, and that you can see all of this. Oh, okay, these are quite flooded here now. So I'm not gonna go any further, but look. Go all the way in there. And of course you can hear my voice echoing so you can sort of see how big it is under here 
Wow. That is amazing. I don't know how much further I'm gonna go because Ah, and then there's this big room in here. Be careful not to fall in. Yeah, apologies if you can't see too much. So my head torch I think is dying a little bit, but I could I should have really gone and got my other lights. Oh ah. yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, so that bit's completely underwater there, so I won't go any further. Right, let's head back out. Right, we're heading back to the car now. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's been a good walk this one, a good wild camp. So, uh, yeah, right, Andy, you got some highlights for us? I'm just gonna go to the one which will be going in the tunnels in Shawmead Fort because it's like I wanted to do for a while and I didn't get to it the first time I went, so that's my highlight. Yeah, no, that was, uh, I'd say it's one of my highlights. I mean, to, for me, it's just the whole thing's really been one massive highlight because I've never been to Kent before walking. Uh, both faults, cliff fault. Shame we couldn't get in there, but not to worry, that was pretty cool. Yeah, Shawmead fault was cool and going in the tunnels. The wild camp was, I think, pretty good. Like the spot we had was, was something else, really. That was right. pretty decent. <laughs> the views along the Thames were great. Um, it's just been good all in general, really. Uh, but the number one highlight is meeting Tom. Yeah, oh, bless <laughs> you. Um, yeah, no, it's been good meeting up with Andy and uh, yeah, maybe a few more walks and camps in the future together. Definitely. We'll shall see. Okay, we're just going to quickly jump in the cars and drive up to the start of the footpath to the explosive factory and then we're going to jump in Andy's truck because it's a bit more suitable for off-road and we're gonna go and have a look at that. So, we'll see you in a second. Let's off road! <laughs> okay, we're on our way now to the disused explosives factory. So we've just come down here in Andy's monster truck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, get into this place and might try and cook some lunch. It is a it's private property, but try and sneak on. Just found this little bit of wood on the foreshore here and a word on it perfectly describes a lot of my haters. Enjoy. So this site started as a gunpowder factory in the 1800s and then later went on to sort of making other explosives, TNT, etc. And then it was finally closed down just after the First World War as it wasn't needed anymore. So yeah, we're gonna have a little look around. It's a massive site though. Hell of a lot to see, there's loads of buildings over there, some really big buildings. And then a lot of this stuff over here in the distance is sort of cut off by waterways and stuff. So we might not be able to sort of get to all that. But yeah, there's a lot here to explore. Unfortunately, it's private property though, so we'll be a bit discreet. Shh. As you can see, just as I was talking about my food, this started uh, sailing past. 
Nice. I'll have to uh, check up and see exactly what ship it is and I'll put it on the screen. But as far as I can see that, it appears to be British. Maybe a frigate. My naval knowledge is not that fantastic. Friggin' in the rigging. Bloody big boat there, yeah, probably from Finland. And we just sat on the foreshore here and cooking up a little bit of lunch. I've got a solid fuel wood stove for change. And I'm going to go with some meatballs and pasta. I've then got over here a cup of soup. And I'm going to treat myself as this is probably the last thing I'm going to film and the last bit of what has been an epic weekend. Around here. <laughs> it was just starting to rain. So oh, no. I was like, What's going on? Oh, it does look a bit dodgy, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to treat myself to this. So it's a uh, red square toffee and apple uh, mixed vodka. It's a cheap ass drink again, probably from somewhere like Aldi's or somewhere. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. So yeah, that uh, battleship that we just saw. Uh, the number one it was F231 yep. and it was the HMS Argyle. How did you know that? And he's just told me. <laughs> so uh, I plagiarised everything from him this weekend as you probably noticed. Um, so yeah, this uh, red square toffee and apple vodka, it's very sweet, it's quite tasty. You forget you're actually drinking alcohol. Mm. It loses it a point though for being in a tin, as always. I would give that 6.5 out of 10. Right, I think my uh, thing's boiling over, so doing some meatballs and pasta. Bang in. Right, well, I'm just uh, heading back to the car now. Uh, we just stopped in the Six Bells pub again in Cliff after the sort of the explosive factory we had some lunch there and stuff and yeah it's uh, time to leave Kent now so it's been a really really good weekend I've really enjoyed this one and I've met a really good friend in Andy aka Kent Survival there was a sign in the pub that said enter as strangers leave as friends and I feel that sums it up here he is <laughs> he's come up behind me sneaky bugger anyways yeah so uh, yeah that's going to be all from this one uh, this time so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this one let us know what you think get in the comments uh, like or dislike if you want and uh, yeah if you haven't subscribed already please do as always I want to say a big thank you to Andy Ken Survival cheers for inviting me out here and being good company and yeah it's been really good thank you also cheers mate thank you very much funny handshake <laughs> like that Excellent, cheers for the cider as well, I will crack that out as well, he kindly uh, bought me a cider as well but I sort of already had quite a few on so the camp. It's a 10 so. out of 10? Yeah, no, that is, <laughs> I think I gave that one a 9 out of 10 oh, before, yeah, so I, I will use that definitely on my next camp, so cheers for that. And yeah, and thank you for watching as well, so uh, yeah, until next time, see you later, bye bye.